It is generally agreed by historians that Jesus and his disciples primarily spoke Aramaic, Jewish Palestinian Aramaic, the common language of Judea in the 1st century AD, most likely a Galilean dialect distinguishable from that of Jerusalem. The villages of Nazareth and Capernaum in Galilee, where Jesus spent most of his time, were Aramaic-speaking communities. It is also likely that Jesus knew enough Koine Greek to converse with those not native to Palestine, and it is also possible that Jesus knew some Hebrew for religious purposes. <laughs> Cultural and linguistic background Aramaic was the common language of the Eastern Mediterranean during and after the Neo-Assyrian, Neo-Babylonian, and Achaemenid empires 722 BC and remained a common language of the region in the 1st century AD. In spite of the increasing importance of Greek, the use of Aramaic was also expanding, and it would eventually be dominant among Jews both in the Holy Land and elsewhere in the Middle East around 200 AD and would remain so until the Islamic conquests in the 7th century. According to Dead Sea Scrolls archaeologist Yigal Yadin, Aramaic was the language of Hebrews until Simon Bar Kokhba's revolt 132 AD to 135 AD. Yadin noticed the shift from Aramaic to Hebrew in the documents he studied, which had been written during the time of the Bar Kokhba revolt. In his book, Bar Kokhba, the rediscovery of the legendary hero of the last Jewish revolt against Imperial Rome, Yigal Yadin notes, It is interesting that the earlier documents are written in Aramaic while the later ones are in Hebrew. Possibly the change was made by a special decree of Bar Kokhba who wanted to restore Hebrew as the official language of the state. In another book by Sigalit ben Zion, Yadin said, It seems that this change came as a result of the order that was given by Bar Kokhba, who wanted to revive the Hebrew language and make it the official language of the state. Yadin points out that Aramaic was the lingua franca at the time. Hebrew historian Josephus comments on learning Greek in 1st century Judea. I have also taken a great deal of pains to obtain the learning of the Greeks, and understand the elements of the Greek language, although I have so long accustomed myself to speak our own tongue, that I cannot pronounce Greek with sufficient exactness, for our nation does not encourage those that learn the languages of many nations, and so adorn their discourses with the smoothness of their periods, because they look upon this sort of accomplishment as common, not only to all sorts of free men, but to as many of the servants as please to learn them. But they give him the testimony of being a wise man who is fully acquainted with our laws, and is able to interpret their meaning, on which account, as there have been many who have done their endeavors with great patience to obtain this learning, there have yet hardly been so many as two or three that have succeeded therein, who were immediately well rewarded for their pains. In the first century AD, the Aramaic language was widespread throughout the Middle East, as is supported by the testimony of Josephus's The Jewish War. Josephus chose to inform people from what are now Iran, Iraq, and remote parts of the Arabian Peninsula about the war of the Jews against the Romans through books he wrote, in the language of our country, prior to translating into Greek for the benefit of the Greeks and Romans. I have proposed to myself, for the sake of such as live under the government of the Romans, to translate those books into the Greek tongue, which I formerly composed in the language of our country, and sent to the upper barbarians, Joseph, the son of Matthias, by birth a Hebrew, a priest also, and one who at first fought against the Romans myself, and was forced to be present at what was done afterwards, and the author of this work. I thought it therefore an absurd thing to see the truth falsified in affairs of such great consequence, and to take no notice of it, but to suffer those Greeks and Romans that were not in the wars to be ignorant of these things, and to read either flatteries or fictions, while the Parthians, and the Babylonians, and the remotest Arabians, and those of our nation beyond Euphrates, with the Adiabeni, by my means, knew accurately both whence the war begun, what miseries it brought upon us, and after what manner it ended. H. St. J. Thackeray who translated Josephus' Jewish wars from Greek into English also points out, We learn from the proem that the Greek text was not the first draft of the work. It had been preceded by a narrative written in Aramaic and addressed to the barbarians in the interior, who are more precisely defined lower down as the natives of Parthia, Babylonia, and Arabia, the Jewish dispersion in Mesopotamia, and the inhabitants of Adiabene, a principality of which the reigning house, as was proudly remembered, were converts to Judaism b. I. 3. 6. Of this Aramaic work the Greek is described as a version. 
made for the benefit of the subjects of the Roman Empire, i.e. the Greco-Roman world at large, in Acts 1 verse 19, the field of blood was known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem in their own language as Akeldama, which is the transliteration of the Aramaic words Hakeldama. Josephus differentiated Hebrew from his language and that of 1st century Israel. Josephus refers to Hebrew words as belonging to the Hebrew tongue, but refers to Aramaic words as belonging to our tongue, or our language, or the language of our country. Josephus refers to a Hebrew word with the phrase, the Hebrew tongue. But the affairs of the Canaanites were at this time in a flourishing condition, and they expected the Israelites with a great army at the city Bezek, having put the government into the hands of Adonabezek, which name denotes the Lord of Bezek, for Adoni in the Hebrew tongue signifies Lord. In this example, Josephus refers to an Aramaic word as belonging to our language. This new built part of the city was called Bezitha, in our language, which, if interpreted in the Grecian language, may be called the New City. On several occasions in the New Testament, Aramaic words are called Hebrew. For example, in John chapter 19 verse 17 KJV, the Gospel writer narrates that Jesus, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. The last word is, in fact, Aramaic. The word, Golgotha, is a transliteration of an Aramaic word, because de in Golgotha is the Aramaic definite article on a feminine noun in an emphatic state. <laughs> Aramaic phrases in the Greek New Testament The Greek New Testament transliterates a few Semitic words. When the text itself refers to the language of such Semitic glosses, it uses words meaning Hebrew, Jewish, but this term is often applied to unmistakably Aramaic words and phrases, for this reason, it is often interpreted as meaning the Aramaic vernacular of the Jews. In recent translations, the Semitisms are mainly words attributed to Jesus by the Gospel of Mark, and perhaps had a special significance because of this. A very small minority believes that most or all of the New Testament was originally written in Aramaic. However, such theories are rejected by mainstream biblical scholarship. Traditionally, parts of the Church of the East Nestorian Church have also claimed originality for the Aramaic New Testament, but it is considered by scholars to be a translation from Greek. Instead, the consensus among mainstream academia is that although it is possible that there may be Aramaic source materials that underpin some portions of the New Testament, the New Testament was compiled and redacted in the Greek language. Scholars are also in agreement that there was at one time an early Aramaic, Hebrew version of a Jewish Christian gospel, but its relation to the Greek gospels is not completely clear because of a lack of sources. Topic. Mark chapter 5 verse 41 And taking the hand of the child, he said to her, Talitha come, which translates as Little girl, I say to you, get up. This verse gives an Aramaic phrase, attributed to Jesus bringing the girl back to life, with a transliteration into Greek, as Talitha kum. A few Greek manuscripts Codex Sinaiticus, Vaticanus of Mark's Gospel have this form of the text, but others Codex Alexandrinus, the text type known as the majority text, and also the Latin Vulgate write komi, komi, kumi instead. The latter is in the Textus Receptus and is the version which appears in the KJV. The Aramaic is Talitha kum. The word Talitha is the feminine form of the word li, meaning young. Kum is the Aramaic verb, to rise, stand, get up. In the feminine singular imperative, it was originally kumi. However, there is evidence that in speech, the final I was dropped so the imperative did not distinguish between masculine and feminine genders. The older manuscripts, therefore, used a Greek spelling that reflected pronunciation whereas the addition of an iota was perhaps due to a bookish copyist. In square script Aramaic, it could be to light kumi or kumi. Topic. Mark chapter 7 verse 34 And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Aphatha which is, be opened, 
Once again, the Aramaic word is given with the transliteration, only this time, the word to be transliterated is more complicated. In Greek, the Aramaic is written of phatha. This could be from the Aramaic edtha, the passive imperative of the verb pitha, to open, since the th could assimilate in Western Aramaic. The pharyngeal h was often omitted in Greek transcriptions in the Septuagint Greek Old Testament and was also softened in Galilean speech. In Aramaic, it could be teeth or peeth. This word was adopted as the official motto of Gallaudet University, the United States' most prominent school for the deaf. Topic. Abba Abba Sigma Topic. Mark chapter 14 verse 36 Abba, Father. He said, Everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Abba, an originally Aramaic form borrowed into the Greek Old Testament as a name 2CHR 29 though a feminine one, standing for the Hebrew Abijah, by common in Mishnaic Hebrew and still used in modern Hebrew written Abba Sigma in Greek, and Abba in Aramaic, is immediately followed by the Greek equivalent Pater with no explicit mention of it being a translation. The phrase Abba, Father is repeated in Romans chapter 8 verse 15 and Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. In Aramaic, it would be B. Note, the name Barabbas is a Hellenization of the Aramaic Bar Abba, Bur B literally, son of the father. Topic. Raka Matthew 5 verse 22 But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. The bracketed text does not appear in all recensions and is absent in the Latin Vulgate. Raka, or Raka, in the Aramaic and Hebrew of the Talmud, means empty one, fool, empty head. In Aramaic, it could be Reich or Reich. Topic. Mammon. Mammon. Topic. Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 No one can serve two masters, for either they will hate the one, and love the other, or else they will hold to the one, and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Luke chapter 16 verses 9 to 13 And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that, when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and love the other, or else he will hold to the one, and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Point two Clement six. Now the Lord declares, No servant can serve two masters. If we desire, then, to serve both God and mammon, it will be unprofitable for us. For what will it profit if a man gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? This world and the next are two enemies. The one urges to adultery and corruption, avarice and deceit, the other bids farewell to these things. We cannot, therefore, be the friends of both, and it behoves us, by renouncing the one, to make sure of the other. Let us reckon that it is better to hate the things present, since they are trifling, and transient, and corruptible, and to love those who are to come, as being good and incorruptible. For if we do the will of Christ, we shall find rest, otherwise, nothing shall deliver us from eternal punishment, if we disobey his commandments. Roberts Donaldson in Aramaic, it could be moan, or, in the typical Aramaic, emphatic, state suggested by the Greek ending, this is usually considered to be an originally Aramaic word borrowed into Rabbinic Hebrew, but its occurrence in late Biblical Hebrew and, reportedly, in 4th century Punic may indicate that it had a more general, common Semitic background. In the New Testament, the word mammon is mammon, is declined like a Greek word whereas many of the other Aramaic and Hebrew words are treated as indeclinable foreign words. Topic. Rabuni. Rabuni. Topic. John chapter 20 verse 16 Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabbani, which is to say, Master, KJV, also in Mark chapter 10 verse 51. 
Hebrew form rabbi used as title of Jesus in Matthew chapter 26 verses 25, 49, Mark chapter 9 verse 5, 11 21, 1445, John chapter 1 verse 38, 149, 431, 625, 9 to 2, 11 to 8. In Aramaic, it would have been Urbni. Topic: Maranatha, Maranatha. Topic: Dadash 10, prayer after communion. Let grace come and let this world pass away. Hosanna to the God, Son of David. If any one is holy, let him come. If any one is not so, let him repent. Maranatha. Amen. Roberts Donaldson, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha, depending on how one selects to split the single Greek expression of the early manuscripts into Aramaic, it could be either mern t maranada, Lord, come, or mern t maranatha, our Lord has come. Topic. Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. Topic. Matthew chapter 27 verse 46 Around the ninth hour, Jesus shouted in a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani? Which is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark chapter 15 verse 34 And at the ninth hour, Jesus shouted in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? Which is translated, My God, my God, for what have you forsaken me? This phrase, among the sayings of Jesus on the cross, is given in these two versions. The Matthean version of the phrase is transliterated in Greek as Eli, Eli lima sabachthani. The Markan version is Eli, Eli lima sabachthani, Eli rather than Eli and lama rather than lemma. Overall, both versions appear to be Aramaic rather than Hebrew because of the verb spauk, spauk, abandon, which is originally Aramaic. The pure Biblical Hebrew counterpart to this word, zb zb, is seen in the first line of Psalm chapter 22, which the saying appears to quote. Thus, Jesus is not quoting the canonical Hebrew version Eli Eli Lama Azabtani attributed in some Jewish interpretations to King David cited as Jesus' ancestor in Matthew. S genealogy of Jesus if the Eli Eli version of Jesus outcry is taken he may be quoting the version given in an Aramaic targum surviving Aramaic targums do use spauk in their translations of the Psalm chapter 22 the Markan word for my god Eli definitely corresponds to the Aramaic form li elihi the Matthean one Eli fits in better with the li of the original Hebrew psalm as has been pointed out in the literature. However, it may also be Aramaic because this form is attested abundantly in Aramaic as well. In the next verse, in both accounts, some who hear Jesus cry imagine that he is calling for help from Elijah, Elia in Aramaic. Almost all ancient Greek manuscripts show signs of trying to normalize this text. For instance, the peculiar Codex Bezi renders both versions with Eli Eli Lama Zafthani Eli Eli Lama Zafthani. The Alexandrian, Western and Caesarean textual families all reflect harmonization of the texts between Matthew and Mark. Only the Byzantine textual tradition preserves a distinction. The Aramaic word form sabachthani is based on the verb sabak, sabak, to allow, to permit, to forgive, and to forsake. With the perfect tense ending t, second person singular, you, and the object suffix ani, first person singular, me. In Hebrew, the saying would be Eli Eli Lama Azabetani. The Aramaic phrase would be Yili Yili Elm Shikni, or Li Li Elm Shikni. Topic: Jot and tittle, iota hen e mi Topic. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law that is, the Torah till all is fulfilled. The quotation uses them as an example of extremely minor details. In the Greek text translated as English jot and tittle is found iota and karia. Iota is the smallest letter of the Greek alphabet iota, but since only capitals were used at the time the Greek New Testament was written iota and because the Torah was written in Hebrew, it probably represents the Hebrew yod y which is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Karaya is a hook or seraph. 
Corbin, Corbin. Topic Matthew chapter 27 verse 6 But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. In Aramaic, Kurban it refers to the treasury in the temple in Jerusalem, derived from the Hebrew Korban, Kurban found in Mark chapter 7 verse 11 and the Septuagint in Greek transliteration, meaning religious gift or offering. The Greek korbanas is declined as a Greek noun, much like other examples. Topic. Sikara, Sikara. Topic. Luke chapter 1 verse 15 For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink, even before his birth he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Topic. Hosanna, Hosanna. Topic. Mark chapter 11 verse 9 then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This word is derived from Huzen. It is generally considered to be a quote from Psalms 118-25. O Lord, save us. But the original biblical Hebrew form was Husai N. The shortened form whose could be either Aramaic or Hebrew. Topic. Aramaic personal names in the New Testament. Topic. Personal names in the New Testament come from a number of languages, Hebrew and Greek are most common. However, there are a few Aramaic names as well. The most prominent feature in Aramaic names is Bar Greek transliteration Bar, Aramaic Bar, meaning, son of, a common patronym prefix. Its Hebrew equivalent, Ben, is conspicuous by its absence. Some examples are Matthew chapter 10 verse 3 Bartholomew Bartholomeos from Bartolme, perhaps son of Furrows, or plowman. Matthew chapter 16 verse 17 Simon Bar Jonah Simon Barion is from Simon Bar Yonah, Simon son of Jonah. John chapter 1 verse 42 Simon Bar Jochanan, Simon son of John. Matthew chapter 27 verse 16 Barabbas Barabbas from Bar Abba son of the father Mark chapter 10 verse 46 Bartimaeus Bartimaeus possibly from combination of Aramaic bar and Greek timaios meaning honorable or highly prized perhaps honorable son Acts chapter 1 verse 23 Barsabbas Barsabbas from Bar Saba son of the sabbath Acts chapter 4 verse 36 Joseph who is called Barnabas Barnabas from Barnava meaning son of prophecy the prophet but given the greek translation hyos periklesios usually translated as son of consolation encouragement the greek could mean invocation as well Acts chapter 13 verse 6 Bar Jesus Barizu from Bar Iso son of Jesus Joshua Topic. Bonerges. Bonerges. Topic. Mark chapter 3 verse 17 And James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he gave them the name Bonerges, which is sons of thunder. Jesus surnames the brothers James and John to reflect their impetuosity. The Greek rendition of their name is Bonerges. Bonerges. There has been much speculation about this name. Given the Greek translation that comes with it. Sons of Thunder. It seems that the first element of the name is Bani, sons of, the plural of, Bar, Aramaic. But this is represented by bone, bone, giving two vowels in the first syllable where one would be sufficient. It could be inferred from this that the Greek transliteration may not be a good one. The second part of the name is often reckoned to be Regas, tumult, Aramaic, Rees or Ergas, anger. Aramaic. Maurice Casey, however, argues that it is a simple misreading of the word for thunder, ram, due to the similarity of s to the final m. This is supported by one Syriac translation of the name as Bine Rama. The Peshitta reads Bene Urgshi Bene Urgasi, which would fit with a later composition for it, based on a Byzantine reading of the original Greek. Cephas <laughs> John chapter 1 verse 42 He brought him to Jesus. 
Jesus looked at him and said, "'You are Simon son of John, you shall be called Cephas'," which is translated, Peter. New International Version 1 Corinthians 1 verse 12 But I say that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Galatians 1 verse 18 NRSV Then after three years I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and stayed with him for fifteen days. In these passages, Cephas is given as the nickname of the apostle better known as Simon Peter. The Greek word is transliterated kephas, kephas. The apostle's given name appears to be Simon, and he is given the Aramaic nickname, kepa, meaning rock, or stone. Single quote dot. The final sigma, sigma is added in Greek to make the name masculine rather than feminine. That the meaning of the name was more important than the name itself is evidenced by the universal acceptance of the Greek translation, Petros Petros. It is not known why Paul uses the Aramaic name rather than the Greek name for Simon Peter when he writes to the churches in Galatia and Corinth. He may have been writing at a time before Cephas came to be popularly known as Peter. According to Clement of Alexandria, there were two people named Cephas, one was Apostle Simon Peter, and the other was one of Jesus' seventy apostles. Clement goes further to say it was Cephas of the seventy who was condemned by Paul in Galatians chapter 2 for not eating with the Gentiles, though this is perhaps Clement's way of deflecting the condemnation from Simon Peter. In any case the relationship of Paul of Tarsus and Judaism which this involves is still disputed. In Aramaic, it could be Kip. Topic. Thomas, Thomas. Topic. John chapter 11 verse 16. Then Thomas, who was called Didymus, said to his co-disciples, Now let us go that we might die with him. Thomas, Thomas is listed among the disciples of Jesus in all four Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles. However, it is only in John's Gospel that more information is given. In three places John chapter 11 verse 16, 20 24 and 21 to 2, he is given the name Didymus, Didymos the Greek word for a twin. In fact, the twin is not just a surname, it is a translation of Thomas. The Greek Thomas, Thomas, comes from the Aramaic Toma, twin. Therefore, rather than two personal names, Thomas Didymus, there is a single nickname, the twin. Christian tradition gives him the personal name Judas, and he was perhaps named Thomas to distinguish him from others of the same name. In Aramaic, it could be tomb. Topic. Tabitha, Tabitha. Topic. Acts chapter 9 verse 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas, the disciple's name is given both in Aramaic Tabitha and Greek. Dorca. The Aramaic name is a transliteration of Tibitha, the female form of Tibi tabia. Both names mean gazelle. It may be just coincidence that Peter's words to her in verse 40, Tabitha, get up, Tabitha anastethi are similar to the Talitha come phrase used by Jesus. In Aramaic, it could be Tibet. Topic: Aramaic place names in the New Testament. Topic. Topic: Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Topic: Matthew chapter 26 verse 36. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, Mark chapter 14 verse 32. And they went to a place that has the name Gethsemane, the place where Jesus takes his disciples to pray before his arrest is given the Greek transliteration Gethsemane, Gethsemane. It represents the Aramaic Gaths main, meaning, the oil presses, or, oil vat, referring to olive oil. In Aramaic, it could be GDSMN. This place name is more properly an Aramized version of an original Hebrew place name. Gath, is a normal word for press in Hebrew, generally used for a wine press not an olive press though, and Shimene Smi is the Hebrew word Shemanim Smim meaning, oils. The plural form of the word Shemin Smen, the primary Hebrew word for oil, just in an Aramaic plural form a instead of the Hebrew plural suffix im. 
The word in Aramaic for oil is more properly Misha. Mish is also attested in Jewish writings in Aramaic from the Galilee. See Caspar Levias, A Grammar of Galilean Aramaic, Jewish Theological Seminary of America, 1986. Topic Golgotha, Golgotha. Topic Mark chapter 15 verse 22. And they took him up to the place Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull, John chapter 19 verse 17. And carrying his cross by himself, he went out to the so-called place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew. Golgotha, Gagulta Aramaic, means skull. The name appears in all of the Gospels except Luke, which calls the place simply Cranion, Cranion the skull, in Greek, with no Semitic counterpart. The name, Calvary is taken from the Latin Vulgate translation, Calvaria. In Aramaic, it could be gult. Though this word has the Aramaic final form ta, de, it is otherwise also closer to the Hebrew word for skull, gulgolik gwalt, than to the Aramaic form. Gabatha John chapter 19 verse 13 when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabatha. The place name appears to be Aramaic. According to Josephus, War, VE.1, number 51, the word Gabbath means high place, or elevated place, so perhaps a raised flat area near the temple. The final could then represent the emphatic state of the noun. In Aramaic, it could be Topic. Akeldama, Akeldama. Topic. Acts chapter 1 verse 19 And this became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that field was called, in their own dialect, Akeldama, that is field of blood, the place of Judas Iscariot's death is clearly named field of blood in Greek. However, the manuscript tradition gives a number of different spellings of the Aramaic. The majority text reads Akeldama, Akeldama. Other manuscript versions give Acheldamak, Acheldamak, Hakeldama, Hakeldama, Hacheldama, Hacheldama, and Hakeldamak, Hakeldamak. Despite these variant spellings, the Aramaic is most probably Hkelma, field of blood. While the seemingly gratuitous Greek sound of kh x at the end of the word is difficult to explain, the Septuagint similarly adds this sound to the end of the Semitic name ben Sira to form the Greek name for the Book of Sirach Latin, Sirach. The sound may be a dialectic feature of either the Greek speakers or the original Semitic language speakers. In Aramaic, it could be kel diem. Topic. Pool of Bethesda, Bethesda. Topic. John chapter 5 verse 2 Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Bethesda was originally the name of a pool in Jerusalem, on the path of the Beth Zeta Valley, and is also known as the Sheep Pool. Its name in Aramaic means, House of Grace. It is associated with healing. In John chapter 5, Jesus was reported healing a man at the pool. For other Aramaic place names in the New Testament beginning with Beth, house of, see Bethabara, Bethany, Bethphage and Bethsaida. In Aramaic, Bethesda, could be spelled Bite Hesard. Topic. See also. Topic. Semitic languages. Aramaic primacy. Topic. Notes Topic. 